This video is to uh, support my students in the carpentry class. Uh, if you're having some trouble with trigonometry, I'm going to help you out here, I hope. You might have recalled from earlier days in your educational career something called SOCATOA. And that was just sort of a memory device to help you remember th the formulas for these trig functions. And for SO it was sine angle is equal to the opposite length divided by the hypotenuse length. And the CA was cosine angle is equal to adjacent length divided by uh, hypotenuse length. And the TOA was tangent angle is equal to opposite length divided by adjacent length. And so you might remember that. Uh, I'm going to present it in a slightly different way, and that is when you say write so, it's going to look more like this. And when you write ca or cah, it's going to look like this. And the toa is going to look like that. And now I'm going to explain the reason for this. If we could imagine this inside of a triangle like this, it's going to help us to figure out what to do with these numbers after the fact. It, it, when things start to look not the same anymore. So for example, here with this, the sine angle, remember, is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite length over hypotenuse length. But if you perhaps were looking for the length of the opposite side, the O, what would that be? Well, it would be opposite is equal to sine angle times hypotenuse, or sine angle times hypotenuse length. Or what about uh, what about the hypotenuse? If you were trying to find out what the hypotenuse was, hypotenuse is equal to O over S, or opposite length, divided by the sine angle. So uh, that just helps you to sort of reconfigure these formulas as you move along in the problem. And the same goes for each of these other ones as well. You can just put this in a triangle and it's exactly the same thing. And I think this is going to help you out here as we move along in this problem. So the question is, what does an actual example of this problem look like? So if we had, say, a triangle like this, and this could represent a ramp or, uh, you know, a roof or you know whatever you you want, and let's say uh, that you were trying to calculate this angle. This is the unknown. Right here, you want to know this angle. So uh, let's say uh, you have the rise of this triangle and you have the run of this triangle and in the, the case of our formulas this would be the opposite because it's opposite from the angle we're trying to calculate and this would be the adjacent length here because it's beside the angle that we are trying to calculate so this is a good uh, example for uh, tangent because tangent angle is equal to opposite over adjacent. Tangent is actually the only one that doesn't use the hypotenuse as part of its formula and so uh, anytime hypotenuse is not involved tangent is the guy you want to use. To look at a practical example of this let's say we have a, a triangle here and well, let's call it a roof actually and the slope of the roof is a 9 over 12. And we're trying to figure out what what is the angle of the roof. Uh, perhaps we have to install some solar panels or, or we're doing some calculations with the rafters or who knows what. Anyway, we're trying to figure out what this angle is down here. So uh, we remember that tangent is opposite over adjacent. If you remember that little triangle that I made, this 
opposite divided by adjacent. So in other words, tan angle, which we do not know, is equal to opposite. So we go opposite from the angle that we want to know. So that's 9. We divide that by the 12, or the adjacent length. 9 divided by 12. So I'm just going to calculate that on my calculator here. 9 divided by 12 equals 0.75. So I leave that 0.75 in there. And on my little Casio FX260 Solar, which is the standard calculator for uh, the students here, in my program, uh, I would go shift 10, and the number that pops up is 36.9 degrees. And so, in fact, that's, that's exactly what this angle would be, 36.9 degrees. Oh, that, that wasn't so bad, actually. I'm going to switch this up a little bit now. Uh, let's say that we need to design and plan for a ramp and it's going to lead up to uh, an elevator elevated platform of some sort and let's say that that elevated platform is going to be 300 high and let's say that we need to make this ramp uh, well five degrees I guess it's a good number just popped into my head I don't know why but anyway five degrees and so we want to know for planning purposes how far out from this elevated platform will this thing be. And so this is uh, this is a good job for tangent because none of this problem has anything to do with the hypotenuse. And so let's draw out our little triangle here. The tangent angle is equal to opposite over adjacent. So here's that triangle which I proposed there while back. And so the tangent angle is going to be 5 degrees and opposite from that is going to be the height of the ramp or 300. And so what this thing's going to look like is 300 divided by tangent 5 degrees will equal the adjacent length. Awesome. So uh, I could calculate this first and then go 300 divided by that number because just, just to do that, I would just go, uh, say, type 5 into my calculator and hit the tangent button. There's a number. I could put that into memory. Or I could just straight away go 300 divided by 5, 10 equals 3,429. 3,429. That sounds about right. Like I just, just guessing. I, I think that must be in the ballpark. But usually, when you're wrong on something like this, you're wrong by a huge amount, and it becomes apparent. And uh, yeah, so that worked out all right. Here's a third way of implementing this whole tangent business. And let's say that uh, I have a limited run for a ramp. And that limited run is, uh, oh, let's see, 4,000 millimeters. And let's say, let's say the ramp needs to be, oh, say, 4 degrees. And so I want to make this slope as, you know, as low as possible. But I have a limited run of 4,000. Like, I, I, I can't change anything about that. So there's my 4,000. And I want to know. How high is this going to be in the end? All right. Well, let's start out with our formula again. Tangent angle is equal to opposite over adjacent. Build our little triangle. And let's plug in the numbers. Well, I know the adjacent. Here's the angle right there. So that is 4 degrees. And I know the adjacent. This is 4,000. So therefore, the opposite length for that short leg over here, the short leg, is equal to 
tangent of 4 degrees times 4,000. See, because they're beside each other, and any time you have two numbers beside each other, it's just, and you lose, there's no operator, it's assumed that they're multiplied. So I'm going to do that on my little Casio here, just as uh, just as you listen in. So I, I'm just going to type 4 tangent, and that says 0 0.069926811. Multiply that by 4,000. 4,000 equals 279.7. 279.7. In other words, if, if these were the parameters for my problem, you know, the limited run was 4,000, it had to be a 4 degree ramp. That means I would build this thing, this platform, 279.7 or maybe 280 millimeters high. So there's a, there's a third way of utilizing tangent.